there was an earthquake this morning on the east coast in New Jersey. It was a magnitude 4.8, and it was widely felt throughout the east coast. Um, it was felt in New York City, in Boston, and in Washington, D.C. Uh, earthquakes actually on the east coast are generally felt much further than earthquakes on the west coast, and that's because of geology. The, the rock doesn't attenuate the seismic waves as much on the east coast, which means seismic waves can propagate further. So earthquakes like this get felt very widely. Well, earthquakes always occur on faults, so we know the cause is a fault. But, you know, in areas like this, we are not at a tectonic plate boundary. So in California, for example, there's a major tectonic plate boundary, and that's an area where we see lots of seismicity. Um, out on the East Coast, we have a bunch of old ancient faults that can slip. Um, it just happens very infrequently. So the earthquake was not unexpected. We know earthquakes of the size can happen in the region, but they just happen very infrequently. So unfortunately, we can't predict when earthquakes occur. And really, we rely heavily on having a good seismic record historically of when earthquakes occurred to have an idea of the rates of earthquakes and their typical sizes in the region. Uh, in this region, the most memorable recent earthquake that was large was a magnitude 5.8 that occurred in Mineral, Virginia. And that was felt widely across uh, the eastern seaboard, including Washington, D.C. And that was in 2011. Um, but, you know, that was a pretty rare circumstance also. So earthquakes like this of this size just do not happen very frequently in the region. This earthquake, compared to some other recent earthquakes in the news, like the Taiwan earthquake, is relatively small. So this was a magnitude 4.8. The earthquake in Taiwan that recently killed 10 people and caused lots of destruction was a magnitude 7.4. So this earthquake's much smaller. Um, it's actually, that's great news for the East Coast, I mean, for many reasons, but one reason is because it was widely felt still. So it's a good reminder that earthquakes can occur in this region. Um, so people should, you know, know what to do in case of an earthquake. And that's if you feel strong shaking, you should drop cover and hold on. So that means get be underneath something sturdy like a desk or a table, drop underneath it, cover yourself, and then hold on to it. So aftershocks are always something that can happen after an earthquake. An earthquake of the size, um, the aftershocks generally won't be that strong, most likely. Um, there's always a chance for a larger event, but that's a pretty low probability generally. Um, aftershocks are most likely to occur right after the main shock, and then their probability decays with time, so they'll become less and less frequent. We uh, have seen one aftershock in magnitude 2 so far. Uh, it doesn't seem like this uh, sequence has a very active aftershock um, sequence, but it is possible to have aftershocks. And, you know, when you feel an aftershock, you should do the same thing you do in any earthquake, and that's um, if it feels uh, you start feeling shaking, it's always good to drop cover and hold on. Yeah, I don't think this earthquake itself has any indication of a change of rate of seismicity in the region. This is just, you know, a single data point. Uh, we haven't seen anything to indicate that seismicity is going to behave any differently than it has in the past. So I would treat this event as a, a uncommon um, event, and I expected um, earthquakes in the region to continue to be uncommon.